Comb! The manga I'm recommending today, Kakugo no Susume, I feel is highly underrated and underappreciated, mainly due to the fact that many Western anime fans have this extremely negative outlook of its more infamous OVA adaptation, which is more known for going under the name of Apocalypse Zero, which I've seen many describe as one of the worst and most depraved OVAs of the 90s. I actually haven't seen the OVA for myself, so I'm not 100% sure of its quality, but if it follows the manga, then I'm sure this is a very exaggerated statement. Well, sure, the series as a whole is extremely grotesque and beyond violent, with plenty of downright weird monsters and scenes. Despite that, I don't feel the series deserves such a harsh reputation, as I feel many don't understand what this series really is which is an extremely violent but passionate love letter to Kamen Rider and old school tokusatsu, or even more so just the legendary works of Shotaro Ishinomori, who if you don't know by name is the king of Japanese superheroes, creating many of Japan's most iconic heroes like Cyborg 009, Android Kikaider, Kamen Rider, and Super Sentai, and that's just naming a few of the more popular ones. The story of Kakugo no Susume takes place in a post-apocalyptic Japan where the environment and humanity have been corrupted, and vile monstrous creatures known as tactical fiends seek to destroy what's left. However, first these fiends must go through Kakugo Hakagure, a young soldier from a feared military family seeking to protect the so-called people without fangs who are unable to protect themselves in these brutal times. Along doing so, Kakugo must also hunt down his older brother, Harara, who turned his back against humanity and now commands many of the tactical fiends Kakugo fights against, in which he'll do through the use of three weapons he's inherited from his family. The first being the Zero Form Martial Art, which turns killing intent against enemies, leading to explosive displays of blood and guts. Then there's the Zero Form Iron Balls, which were injected into Kakugo at a young age that allow him to turn 56% of his body into steel, enhancing his attack and durability, which, no pun intended, sounds metal as fuck. And finally, there is a fortified armor shell Zero, a living armor containing an army of souls, which is also metal as fuck, and on top of looking absolutely badass, is armed to the brim with various weapons Kakugo can use to dispatch evil. Now, if I were to break down what reading this manga feels like to a somewhat more general audience, it's like if Go Nagai decided to make his own Kamen Rider manga with a lot of influence from Fist of the North Star. Like many of Nagai's work, who if you don't already know, I am a super big fan of, Kakugo no Susume is super hot-blooded and full of insane violence. Faces are torn off, skin is melted, blood and guts burst and fill up various panels. Then we have the absolutely insane designs of the Tactical Fiends, which like many of Nagai's demons from his various works, come in a large variety of outrageous designs, though in this series case I feel that they're less badass looking and a lot more grotesque looking. With a lot of these designs I feel being the sort of barrier that keeps a lot of people from getting into this series, because damn, these things are straight up ugly. But at the same time I feel that's a pretty weak excuse in not getting into this amazing series. Also, like many of Go Nagai's demons, a lot of these tactical fiends have weaponized genitalia, like this creepy old guy's demon dick and ball sack, and of course, we even got boob rockets in this manga. Getting into the North Star vibes of this series, we have the obvious setting and main character, who is manly, stoic, but still passionate, as well as wields a deadly martial art that causes enemies to explode in a firework display of carnage. And then we also got that whole sibling rivalry thing. So yeah, Go Nagai doing a Kamen Rider series with North Star vibes I feel is a pretty accurate way to describe the series as a whole, however as the series continues it becomes much more apparent that the series is much more of what I described earlier, being a super violent but passionate love letter to old school tokusatsu and Shotaro Ishinomori. Kakugo himself feels very much like a Showa era writer, passionate and has an unwavering heart for justice alongside the series touching on themes of a loss of humanity, which is something many of Ishinomori's main characters faced. Then of course we got the Zero Armor, which definitely has Kamen Rider vibes, especially with that scarf that gives off a lot more of the Showa era feel to the character. And then of course Kakugo practically Rider kicks every enemy to death in the series. However, there are a lot of other designs in the series that carry influence from other Ishinomori series like Kikaider, Robot Detective K, and even Inazuma Man. Outside the design influences, a lot of the characters themselves and even the story structure feel a lot more in line with other tokusatsu and older Japanese superhero shows, just injected with a lot more explicit material. 
However, now let's get into more of the series' own merits. Very much like Kakugo himself, the action here is just straight up metal. Featuring loads of crazy techniques from Kakugo going against the more weirder abilities of the Tactical Fiends, the violence here is just absolutely off the charts, which I guess is to be expected from the series creator, Takayuki Yamaguchi, who's more famously known for Shigeru Death Frenzy. All this combined with the overall heroic hot-bloodedness of the series leads to plenty of really awesome and memorable fights, with my favorite being the fight against the Tactical Fiend General, Bolt, who really gave Kakugo one of his most intense battles. The art here might be a turnoff to some, and I won't lie, when I first took a look at this series years ago, it definitely didn't do anything for me. But obviously, since then, I've really grown as an anime and manga fan. And it really is a unique style. It's very cartoony, but at the same time has a very hot-blooded, rebellious vibe to it, which I feel really enhances the hellish imagery of the series at times. His manga also has a bit of an alternate retelling series called Exoskull Ray, which reimagines the series a bit, while also giving us a lot more cool armor shells that Kakugo has to fight against this time around. Unfortunately, both the original series and Exoskull are both not fully translated online as of this video. However, hopefully if more people get into this series, we can eventually see it completed one day. Either that or the series somehow magically gets an official English release. But despite that, I still highly encourage you to read this series if anything I mention here interests you. As there's still enough content here for a good time, and I would love to see a lot more people appreciate this series rather than just shame it. As if you're a fan of Japanese superheroes and tokusatsu, or just a fan of super violent mangas, you should really give this one a read. And if you're like me and just absolutely love both, then immediately stop what you're doing right now and check out Kakugo no Susume already. And with that, as always, I am Mr. Falcon Punch. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.